it points to the wrong mindset that people have about leadership. They are in leadership, but they have not gotten it right in their mind. The misconception of today's leaders about leadership. Take note of that. This is the third teaching for no fourth teaching for the year. Hallelujah. No, third one for the year. We didn't do it in January. Hallelujah. The misconception of today's leaders about leadership. Now, if you look at the topic, you will see that these people are already leaders, but they do not have the proper understanding of what leadership is all about. Now, and we all know that leadership did not start from either the church or the community. Leadership starts from the family ground. Amen. We have either the father, the leader of the house. We have the mother. She's the leader of the children. We have children according to their uh, birth position. Firstborn is the leader of the younger ones, you know, and so on like that. So leadership did not start from the church. It started on earth. It started in the family life. Amen. And we also know that even in the animal kingdom, uh, they follow leadership arrangements. So I don't know how God made it to be so, but do you know that animals also have leaders? You know, at times I take my time to study the ants. When I see them, you see that somebody will take lead and others will begin to follow. Now, if they want to carry maybe cockroach or anything that is eatable unto them, you will see that somebody will take the lead, you know, and all others will just begin to follow. So leadership, uh, please, who is touching this? You are reducing it. Leadership is, is in all ratification. So let me start by saying, if there's anything to this world is in deep need of, it is in deep need of leaders who have the true understanding of leadership, you know, and according to how it is supposed to be. Today we have people with various titles. I'm Moya Wenyo, Tony Taito Rishi Yet, with less or even no impact at all. They have titles, but no impact. So let me tell you that leadership is not a post. It's an assignment. Leadership is not a post. Leadership is not uh, a position. It's not a title you bear. You know, there are title-holding husbands, but are not responsible husbands. There are title-holding wives, but are not responsible wives. There are title-holding firstborns that should show example, but are not. You know, I went for a family meeting some time ago, and uh, the whole family gathered together, and uh, we called the firstborn of the entire house. And all of us were... the one that manifests leadership order. So leadership is not all about, you don't need a title to, to, to become a leader. I wrote here, we once had a military president in our nation, Nigeria, who was just the president in the office, but not by performance, but whose vice won the love and the trust of all by his performance. If you are a Nigerian, I know you will know who I'm talking about. But if you don't know, I don't think you are Nigerian. Ah, who say you don't know? Now, he was military president one time. He's now the current uh, 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 democratic president. When he was military president, it was his vice, Idi Agbon, that was acting. Do you remember now? That was acting. 
when he was military president, we didn't used to hear him. Only he would come out to give speech on Independence Day. He would come out to give speech. Please come out of this. He would give speech uh, during um, the New Year. But when we talk about performance, Idi Agbon was the man. Everybody was talking about him. You know, he was the one behind war against indiscipline. Why? Maybe some of you were not even born that time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So leadership has nothing to do with title. It has nothing to do with um, office. Hallelujah. In this teaching, we shall be looking out for some of the wrong beliefs people in today's leadership position has. Let's look at those things. Wrong beliefs that people in leadership position has. We take three in the service and we'll close. Amen. Can we look at them one after the other? But before we start, let's go to the scripture. We are having a long reading. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 10 to verse 16. 1 Kings chapter 12, from verse 10 to verse 16. Then we also read 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 7. I read, And the young men that were grown up with him, Speak unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto the people that speak unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us, that thus shalt thou say unto them, My father's finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas... My father did lead you with a heavy yoke. I will add to your yoke. Please follow the reading. I will add to your yoke. My, your yoke. My father had chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpion. Verse 12. So Je Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king has appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. Verse 13. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old, old men's counsel that your yoke, sorry, where am I? 13. Then the king answered the people roughly and rejected the advice which the elders had given him and spake of them and he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men saying, my, fathers, my father made your yoke heavy but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. Verse 15. So the king did not listen to the people, for the, for the thorn of events was from the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord had spoken by Ahijah, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nabat. Verse 16. We'll stop at verse 16. Show us verse 16. Now, when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people did what? They answered the king saying, What share have we in David? Just like what is happening now, the Ebos are yearning for what? The Afra nation. The Yorubas are yearning for what? Yoruba nation. Uh, the Aousas are not yet yearning for anything. So it means that Nigeria, if care is not taken, if things are not well managed, might divide into how many? Three nations. Now we had the Jaws before, but they have come down. The Jaws were saying we are going. We are going to go for a Jaw nation. So it first happened in the Bible. The people said to our tent, what share do we have? What share have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tent, O Israel, now, see to your own house, O David. So Israel departed their tents. Now let's look up. Hallelujah. What will be our focus today? I wrote here, our lesson from this long reading shows us that today's generation of leaders believe that leadership is a position that should make them to be worshipped or giving special preference. Now let me come again. Let me come again. Take your notes. Very well now. Our lesson from this long reading. Shows us 
that today's generation believes that leadership is a position that should make them to be worshipped or given special preference. They do not know that leadership is an opportunity to serve people. Leadership is an opportunity to serve the people that you are chosen to lead. Now, if you look at what happened here, when they came to him, sir, give us your, in your inaugural speech. Show us your manifesto. Can you plan in, sir? We, are, we have made you, you are king. Show us your manifesto. And the Bible says, Rehoboam first went. Is it Leo or Jeho? Jeroboam, one of the two. He went to see the elders that serve with his father. They told him, he said, no, 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 no. You know what? In leadership, serve the people. Show us verse 7. 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 7. 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 7. Now, this was the advice of the leaders. That whoever is going to lead these people must make sure that he becomes a servant to the people. Now, let's look at it together. And they spoke to him saying, if you will be a servant to these people today and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be what? They will be what? They will be your servant forever. Now, this was the counsel he despised. How will I be their servant? Am I not the king? Now, and that's one of the things today's leaders don't understand. People believe that when you put them in position of leadership, it makes them lord over the people. No, 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 no. People believe that when you put them in position of leadership, it makes them to deserve special preference from the people. Do you know that several marriages today, the reason why there is crisis is because the head of the family is living as a lord when, he was, when he's supposed to live as a servant. I will explain as I go on. Now, the same thing, you notice today that we don't have people learning work again. If you go to so many places, you say, there's no apprentice, there's no apprentice again. See, there was a time eh, that apprentice endured the matrician of masters. When you come late to work, your master will bring out fan belt, you know, bring out wire and begin to beat you. Gone are those days. Because as I doubt those days, those masters did not understand what leadership is all about. Now, let me sing this into your heart. A leader is a servant of the people. I will tell you what you have to do. A leader is a servant. Now, if Rehoboam has had listened to what the elders have said, he will, I will explain, but let's, let me continue with my notes. It is important you know, it is important you know that you should occupy, if you occupy a leadership office, you have not been, sorry, uh, sorry, they do not know that leadership is an opportunity to serve the people, okay, uh, they are chosen. It is important you know that you should occupy a leadership office if, you shouldn't occupy a leadership office if you have not been serving before. Now, I was listening to the uh, speech of uh, uh, our governor, new, the second time governor, Shei Makinde. As he won the election, people went to congratulate him. You know what he said? He said, I want to thank you, the people, for re-electing me. But I want you to know that re-election is opportunity to serve more. So which means you have re-elected me because you want me to do more work. He said, so I'm going to tell my team, we have been re-elected so that we can work more, work better than what we did. So, leadership is not an office that will make you to just sit down and begin to give command. A leader is a servant. Who is a leader? A leader is the servant of the people. Forget about what is happening in Nigeria today. A leader is a servant. You are given opportunities to occupy that position so that you can serve the people with your gift. Let's look at how to serve in leadership. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leaders are people's servants. And when, listen, and when we are brought into leadership, we are brought to use the opportunity we have to make life better for the people. Now, how do we serve them? We serve them by using that opportunity of leadership to make life better. Now, Shema Kinde is our governor. Thank God for his life. But he's there to serve us. That's why today, I'm not campaigning for him. You know, campaign is over. 
today if you go to uh, places now you want to bus we do not know that we are we now have bus terminals now he sat down he said wait the way kidnapping is going on eh? and when you come was so like want here any a stable garage now he served us by giving us if you go to challenge there's a terminal there if you go to a job there's a terminal there if you get to a yard there's a now there are places where people can go to now and say yes this is a garage where i can now he was talking about transport thing too i listened to him they said why did you pick one of the towns he said see you know what we call pms system that is a park management system it used to be a, a road union before he said i sat down several killings are going on these people are making money and not remitting anything to the government government owned land okay you know what we are going to do to make this thing organized he now set up park management system put leadership there they asked him during the campaign that this pms thing are they actually making money the man said yes somebody now asked how much do they remit to the government every day he said well every day they remit eight million naira eh? that every blessed day park management system will pay eight million into all your state posts now, 8 million naira times one month. Calculate for me. That's about 240 million. Abi? Or 24 million. You know, it's not 24 million. It's about 240 million. Every month. Now, calculate it in one year. Answer. Let's work fast. We're working together. I want to prove something to you. A leader is a servant. You use your gift, your, your position as a leader to make life better for those under you. That's why if you are a leader even at home, the life of your children, the life of your wife should reflect your leadership excellence. If you are... Ma, sir. 20... Point, 2.8 billion is... Okay, I can't answer anymore. Ma, answer me now. You are not an accountant. Only one call. Fear, I'm an accountant. How, what did you call it again? 2.8 billion how many years every year now calculate that in four years now can you imagine somebody will be saying the kosovo lawyer state you know the, I, there's no money there's no money the man is working do you know that he's paying 13 months salary every year we have 12 months but you will tell them during festive season december i will pay you twice full salary twice you see that the, the retirees are coming out to say, ah, thank God for our governor, he's not owing us, he's paying us. Now, a leader is a servant. If the life of the people under you are not better, you are wasting the opportunity to lead. Leadership is not just go there and occupy the position. No, those of you that are pastors, hear me. Leadership is not just go there and occupy the position. I was hearing something on Wednesday. When uh, 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 at the Bible study, that we had a baby overnight. It was not easy for us. The father of the baby was not even on ground. He was not in town. He only had Yahweh Tibimo. And he just started putting it on, on social media. Everybody was congratulating him. His baby, as at the time he sent that message, was not alive. They give back to the child. The child was not... The, 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 the people they had called us, as they were going to the theater they had called, we were praying. And we got home to go and sleep. That's what leaders... A leader is a servant. Lord, it must not happen. Lord, it must not happen. Lord, it must not happen. Lord, it must... Ah, we began to pray. My wife was praying because they were, they were actually calling her. They didn't call my line. Mama, Mama, oh my yeah, oh Miko, okay. Ah, 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 Allah runcos power, Allah runcos power, Allah runcos power. A leader is not a lord. A leader is a servant. And my wife said, "Oni, oni, oni, oni. Oh my yeah, okay. Oh my yeah, okay. Oh my yeah, me. Kineka she. Oh yeah, eje kagbadra, eje kagbadra. She held my hand. Let us pray. We started praying. They dropped the call. After like one hour, they called back again. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Who can she? Who me? Eh, Nisi, Ogbi, but doctor, what if I was see usage? Ah, you will like ferry motor, need 2 a.m. You will like ferry. Now, can you imagine if they are calling me at that time and I've switched off my phone? That's one of the fights I have with some of our pastors. Why would they be calling you? 
and it is your wife that is speaking call. You are a leader. Your phone must always be on. I used to tell some of my staff, you use your phone to play game all through. Your battery should not be low. Imagine if my battery is low at that time. If my wife's battery is low at that time, we can lose that child. As they were calling, I asked my wife, my wife said, honey, who can we call that will pick them to UCH by 2 o'clock? Am. We try and try and try and try. The phone wasn't, no, there was nobody we could call. Then the woman called back and steered faith in us. He said, Daddy, Mommy, show don't really shade me. She don't you see it. Can God not do it? My wife said, God can do it. We started again. She said, Honey, honey, stand up. She didn't sleep because phone was with her. Me, I was dozing. She will wake me up. Then around at three o'clock, the woman called. Otike, Otike, Mama Unwelen Boy, Unwelen Boy, Olunke, 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 Olunke. Ah, come again, show me, come again, show me. Where did you come You know. Only, but still, most of them are pay almost any doctor's fee. Then my wife said, "You know what? It will not be far. You see, when you see it, okay, Emalo." Around that 4 a.m., they got a vehicle. Getting to UCH, they call back. Hello, ma. Hello, ma. When he goes in bed, the UCH. Mama said, okay. Oh, yeah, ma. Lo, eh, ma lo, nian, son. They got to near son. She called back. Hello, ma. Hello, ma. When he goes in, Celinda. For oxygen. Ni, ni, oh, nian, son. Mama now said, oh, yeah, eh, ma lo, liyoro. They got to Lioro. As they wanted to pay, they came back. Go see bed. They call again. Hello, ma. Hello, ma. They said there is no bed. Go see bed. Ni, oh, liyoro. Go see bed. Mama now said, wait. Hospital 30 kuro. One man more hospital to need equipment to one need for money. Equi doctor be. The eti de usage. Any private. Do you know where they found the private? Muslim Mudinjo. From Amfani here. That has the facility. Because she's, she, she had prolonged labor. The baby had excreted and has eaten it. Leaders are servants. You, you don't have business and leadership if you don't care for the people you lead. All these ones that, hey, hello, hello, honey, for me to call this, uh, you are not a leader. Ah, you are not a leader. See right here. This was what the woman didn't want to hear. Follow me. Leaders are the people's servants. I wrote here, in church leadership, when we are interceding for the people, we are serving them. When we are interceding for the people, what are we doing? If it's about him, pray for one year. What are we doing? We are serving them. A leader doesn't sleep like members. A member can just decide to say, ah, in fact, eh, oh, eh, pafu, me, eh, pafu, yeah, move very soon. I have never off my phone ever in my life. I have never off my phone ever in my life. Me pafu. And when people ask me, hey, can pafu, I want more me call. Any one of them can need me at any time. One of us over the weekend was leaving the country. I prayed for him. I've anointed him on the altar here. And as he was going, I took, he said, Papa, what if I were playing by? I waited for his call. Friday, I didn't get to see him. It was Saturday that I sent one of our brothers that he has entered UK, but he doesn't have seen him. But can he call me using WhatsApp? I said, tell him to call me. That's who leaders are. Leaders are servants. Leaders are servants. You serve the interest of the people you are leading. Can I go on? When we visit to check on the people we are leading, what are we doing? We are serving them. When we check to visit, what is going on? I was asking one of our leaders during the week. I said, wait. This, you have not had your wife has not been pregnant. He said, yes, sir. 
I said, I noticed this one too in this. I said, you know what you are going to do? You go and do this particular test. Come and give me feedback. I said, the reason why I will not tell you to go with your wife is because I have done it before. They've been married for years. The woman was not pregnant. I now told them to go and do this particular test. They now discover that the man has problem. To be a, a, a more some women. I said, that thing make them to leave our church. Because the brother eventually said, I purposely sent them to the hospital so that his wife would disgrace him. That I would have sent them separately. So I told this new person, I said, see, go and do it separately, secretly. Come and show me the result. Now, when you show me the result, I will tell you the next thing to do. Those are leaders. This is how I want you to lead. Why did I come up to say, okay, a choir, we are going to be using robe. I noticed that, yes, you have good vision. You want them to put on canvas. You want them to put on different kind of clothes. But it is affecting the finances of so many of these people. So, at times when I look at the choir, I see that some people are seated in the congregation some people are singing when i now ask why is it that some people are sitting in the congregation some people are singing they'll say it is the uniform for the day ah, ah. if uniform will cause issue for people not to sing we have choir robe that we have paid for or you don't know how much we we paid to sew this robe let us reintroduce it so that everybody will be free to sing for jesus so if what you have to wear is Nika, wear it. Just put your robe on it. If it is pants, wear it. Just put your robe on it. Yes! So that nobody will say, eh, eh, sir, I don't have the color. Leaders are servants. Now, those of you that are business owners, you are serving the people that are your clients. You know, I'm the proprietor, I'm a proprietor too as your pastor. There are times I'll go to the, to, when I get to school, my wife also used to do it at the school here, I would check all the textbooks. I would check all the notebooks. I would check all the students one after the other. I had to sack a teacher because of it. We now discover, look at this, in our pre-nursery. Government have syllabus for pre-nursery, they shouldn't write more than 1 to 15. But I discovered that in our pre-nursery, I now put them in three categories. Pre-nursery A, and almost pre-nursery 20 to 3 years, something called 1 to 50. One word. Pre-nursery B, and almost pre-nursery 20 to 3 years, something called 1 to 20. One word. Pre-nursery C, I want you to you want to follow. Now we categorize them to help them. And we put them in different tables. 1 to 4, this is their table. 1 to 20, this is their table. 1 to 50, this is their table. Any leader that cannot produce positive change has no business in leadership. Say I hear. You're not talking to me. When we prepare well to teach the people good message, we are serving them. I told you, I went to dedicate the house of one of us. And the brother came up. He said, sir, I want to thank you, sir. I said, for what? He said, when I, the day I joined this church, I wanted to go and become a conductor. Bus conductor. My boss said he would be paying me 500 naira per day. He said, sir, and I decided I will give 200 naira to my mama, to my mommy every day. I will give 100 naira to my savings every day. And I'll be using 100 naira to feed every day. He said, but that day, they invited me to church. As I entered the church, the title of your message was pencil. I said, eh. He said, and the first thing you say is that every pencil has an eraser on it. You can clean your mistake. If you have made errors in the past, you, it is erasable. Don't think that errors are permanent. He said, and I said, number two, the more you sharpen the pencil, the sharper and clearer it is on paper. He said, and I said, the more you develop yourself, improve yourself, the more what you attract. He said, that day he made up his mind. He said, today, sir, in this field, I'm a master. 
from this field, I've built this house. He said, this is not my first house, sir. I had to leave this, this one I was doing to build this one in order to move my family to him. What if I didn't have time to prepare this? You know, she had one of people who told me, they sure she did. Ah, kill a man, fool. Kill a man, fool. Ah, keep on, you know, they play also. And you're more jack bad. Oluwa! Ye ka ye mi tun bi keyboard yi se ndun. Oya adura mo mo kitin ba pe e gba. Ti ba de tori pe e tun gba yen dada. Ah, ibo lati le ri adura ogun. Eyin yen wo speaker e wo bo se ya e wa e lo ya yen. Mi to je seri pe pa kolo han Oluwa e wa ye mi. Ma jo ya adura. Mo mo ke ma da. But that's the error we are having today. A leader is a servant. When I look at my wife and children, I am not happy if I see some things they don't have. My wife used to say, she doesn't like to talk about needs in my ears. He said, because I will not rest. I will be thinking over it. That's my job. So every one of you, if God has brought you here, you are a leader. You are a leader. How will you lead as a husband? There's no food in your house. You are a failure. Every husband I'm talking to, there's no food in you. You are a failure. You are not a leader. A real man, husband, leader, will not sit down comfortably when his children and wife are hungry. Leaders are servants. See after me, leaders are servants. I can't, I can't hear you. That's why I will sit down most times as a, as a pastor of the church. What should I teach these people next to move them to another phase of life? That's why if we are made a branch pastor in any way, that's how to think. You care about the people. Their lives must improve. Ah, we are still on point one. We, are, we have a long way to go. See, leaders are servants. When we make our, ourselves available to counsel the people we are serving them when we pick their calls at moments when they need us we are serving them service is the only way to productive and rewarding leadership service excuse me is the only way to productive and rewarding kind of leadership. I'm telling you, you cannot be rewarded in leadership in, as a leader if you are not a servant. So let me ask you again, who is a leader? A leader is a servant. One of us was sharing with me. He touched me. He said, sir, I was driving a long challenge. That's brother Busayo. He said, I just had, boom, from the back. Somebody bashed my car. And I came down. It was the entourage of Governor Shehima Kinde. They bashed my car. He said it was just a little touch on my bumper. As I came down, he said, I didn't even see the governor at first. I asked the man, what is this now? He said, the governor just wind down. He said, please, give him 10,000. He said, they counted 10,000, pra, 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 and gave him. Ah, he said, he said in his mind, bash it again. <laughs> He said, because when he looked at it, there was no scratch. It's because the governor understands that a leader is not a lord. If it's a lordship kind of leader, he said, put him in the boot. Let me show him I'm the governor of this state. A leader is a servant. Do you know that when I see my wife and children eating, I'm always happy that I've done well. When I see them eating, I'm always happy that I've done well. At times when they sleep, I stand up from, my, from the bed. I look at my wife on the bed. 
I'll go to the children's room. I'll look at them. They are sleeping and snoring. I'm happy. A leader is a servant. If you don't get it right in that aspect, you can't be productive as a leader. Number two. Thank you. Thank you. Let's look at the second misconception of leadership. Matthew chapter 3, 13 to 15. Matthew chapter 3, 13 to 15. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized of him. Hmm. Verse 14, we stop at 15. And John tried to prevent him, saying, Ah, I know you, you are the Son of God. I need to be baptized by you. And look at you coming to me. Verse 15. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill what? All righteousness. Then he allowed him. Imagine Jesus, the Son of God, is being baptized by John the Baptist, the Son of Man. What is the lesson? Today's generation of leaders see leadership as a position that exempts them from following due process. I come again. Today's generation of leaders see leadership as a position that exempts them from following due process. Now, that's another mistake in leadership. Now, that our brother that told me that uh, uh, Shehimaki, this convoy bashed into his car. Was, it was a challenge where there was this uh, um, um, tra uh, traffic light. He said he stopped and they stopped too. Our governor did not break the rule of traffic light. He also stopped. See, can I tell you this truth? Leadership does not exempt you. I will explain you from due process. Now, if you are telling everybody that, see, we are going to be here by eight. A, lead, a true leader leads by example. He will be there by eight. He will not just be coming after everybody has come. Say, yes, I am their father. I'm coming now to show myself. Leaders don't do like that. True leaders don't do that. Because they understand that they are servants. But wrong leaders, people that, don't, that have wrong mindset about leadership, they won't they'll say, no, we are lords. Look at John the Baptist. As he saw Jesus coming, eh, I'm alone for a ride. Ah, she baptized him, sir. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. Let us fulfill all righteousness. Which means, you came before me here. And since you came before me, you have to baptize me. That's what is written. That was when John the Baptist now agreed. How many leaders live like that today? And that's one of the things I used to talk about in our church here. We have two major departments. We have King's Men Fellowship. We have April Epas Fellowship. And I said all females attend April Epas. All, all males attend King's Men. Now don't say I'm a minister. Whatever they are doing in King's Men, I won't do it. You cannot rebuke acts of disobedience if your own obedience is not complete. I will show you the scripture. If you don't have a record in the women fellowship, your own leadership will fail. Because you have not set the standard. Everybody, including me, should be part of that fellowship. Go and ask the king's men. They are making a contribution for something now. And he told me the target. I said, okay, don't worry. I will give 20,000 as my own support. Now, I went to their platform and I saw my name. Pastor Prince Willafolabi gave 20,000 air this King's Men project. You can't lead well if you are not a leader by example. The women we call meeting, where mistress will not be in the meeting. 
and you want to call meeting, you expect the choir to be there. They won't be there. You see that the spirit of disobedience will continue to flow. The king's men will call meeting. The minister will not be there. And you want to call for meeting, they will attend. They won't attend to you. It won't flow. Jesus knelt down. And John the Baptist took his head, dipped it into the water. And he came out. And John the Baptist, as Jesus was going, was telling his disciples, he said, you see that man? He's sander. Eh? I am unworthy to untie. See, I hear. It's like you are angry today. If Jesus, our Lord, operated leadership like that, by not following example, he would have destroyed the process that God had instituted himself. Leaders become super productive when they make themselves good examples of the principles operating in the organization under which they serve. When you make yourself good examples. I love something about the Igbos. Listen to me. I love something about the Igbos. I hate that in the Yorubas. Now, if an Igbo man has a very big business, he won't put on a better. You won't see him coming to his shop, flaunting 1,500. A maker will wear nika. Abi? When customers come in, the boy can pretend to be the ogre. A maker will agree to be the omoshe. A maker's one is that just make sure that money enter. They are offloading. A maker is there with his boys. But let a Yoruba man has one big shop. Now, if you are as the boss, come at that time, you are encouraging your staffs. They will know that Oga won't come until 12, they won't come until 11. Let's lead by example. Let's follow due process. Let's follow the rules of the organization. That's what makes leadership to work. But today's leaders believe that by virtue of my position, I am exempted from the rules. Put on screen for me 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. Let's read it with the NIV version. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6, NIV version. Hmm. Second Corinthians 10 6. Second Corinthians, not second Samuel. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. Labor Sakaya. Let's read together after the count of three. One, two, and let's go three. And be ready to punish all disobedience. When what? When your obedience is what? Is fulfilled. What has made us to come this far in ministry? Can I tell you this truth? If you ask me and my wife, we are sacrificial people when it talks about this vision. We gave drum sets to our church in one of our branches. We gave them drum sets so they just needed to do some adjustments. So I now told them, do you want us to still pay for the adjustment? They said, ah, no sir, we are going to oh, yeah, take it to the Lipiara. I gave them the, the address of the man. One month after I asked, Alpha, I hope you are enjoying your drum set. They said, we have not gone to collect it, sir. I said, how much does it cost to do it? I know your salary where you work. You can use your own money. Can't you use your own money? I can say it very well. If God is blessing to you, hear me today. Thank God for it. He started many years ago in his department. He just came one day and said, sir, don't give us money for battery again. If you have forgotten me, don't give us money for battery for, your, for microphones again. Sir, 
I will be sorting it. The reason why some leaders are not prospering is because they are very stingy. They are waiting for angel to fall down from heaven to come and do division in their hands. It doesn't work that way. So if God is blessing me, I'm not surprised. What I'm telling you, he has been doing over 15 years. I don't know how they repair some of their equipment at times. It is the one that passed their level that they will call me that, sir, this one has passed our level. Now, those in the media, up till this morning, I can tell you, I don't know how they put uh, internet on whatever they do. They use it as their own seed. If you say you are a leader, you must be sacrificial. So what's your vision? Say I hear. It's like you're angry. Say I hear. So if your own act of obedience is not complete, you can't rebuke act, any act of disobedience. Every leader should know that being leaders, being a leader does not exempt them from being responsive in their various departments. Understand it. And I wrote here, King's men, able helpers, time consciousness, commitment and giving. That you are chief usher does not mean you should not be committed in the King's men. The King's men is our fellowship. That you are children church coordinator does not mean you should not be committed in the able helpers. The able helpers is the women fellowship. We have only one. Jesus submitted himself to be baptized by who? By John the Baptist. So let's take the point again. What's point number two? Leader, today's generation of leaders see leadership as a position that exempts them from following due process. Let's take the last one for this morning. Exodus chapter 7, verse 12. Exodus 7, 12. Uh, 17, 12, sorry. 17, 12. Exodus 17 and verse 12. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and Hor held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hand remained steady, steady till the sunset. Let's take that in as well. His hand remained steady. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with a sword. Now let's pause the lesson. Today's generation of leaders, sorry, in today's generation of leaders, instead of supporting their Moses with what they have, they prefer to be seen, known, and heard. Now, that's what we have in today's generation of leaders. Instead of them to lift up their, the hand of their Moses, they will say, no, let me do it by myself. When their pastor preaches a powerful message, they will pick the point. Go on internet, write the point, and put under it their name. Now, they have forgotten that the lifting of Moses' hand is what determines the victory of Joshua. To this generation of leaders, don't want to be served. Don't want to serve. That's why I say, can, can, can I tell you this truth? Can I tell you this truth? If you are serving in any way, hear me. Serve your leader for grace. Serve your boss in such a way that when you are going, let him say, 
bo se sin mi na se ma sin eh ti wonu a le sami because some of us of elo make bo se sin mi ni wa ni won se ma sin eh ani yan ga en se pe fun mi ni Aaron and all they didn't leave the hand of Moses they were using what they have to promote because the progress of Israel was tied to the lifting of the hands of Moses when your leader is lifted, some doors will open for you. Understand that clearly. That's why all this is my own. Eh, eh, since, since I'm not the one that is in charge of that branch, I don't need to give any support to that branch. Eh, since I'm not the one in charge of that department, I don't need to give any support to that department. Since I'm not the one, listen, whoever is your Moses, lift his hand up. Do you know that because of this thing that Hall did, the man H U R Hall, his grandson was Bezali. God blessed him with a generational blessing. Bezali, the Bible says, and the Lord God said unto Moses, "Pick Bezali. I have endowed him with all kinds of wisdom to bring out craft uh, designs from gold, wood, and stone." Ishetiba baeshe grace lo enjoy. Today we have several general overseers that God didn't call. Do you know why? Do you also want to be seen? Now, can you imagine? Okay, look at, I told you how we prayed. Dead child came back to life. We didn't sleep. Let them now decide to say, ah, pastor, why they try you? Festive season, lone boy. You know, you were not there when we were praying overnight. Let them now begin to come. Maybe they, come, they, they decide to come with a bag of rice. They come with chicken. That's what you see. A person bad no. She me know ni lo alo bereke ni ba. Lift up the hand of all. God did not call everyone into the ministry of founding a work. Do you know that Moses also came from the generation of Aaron? Instead of supporting their Moses with what they have, they prefer to be seen. They prefer to be known. They prefer to be heard. Most of them do not know that they are supposed to gain access to the glory God prepared for them by their service attitude. Please serve. I've told you three things this morning. Number one, a leader is a servant. How is he a servant? He's to use the gift of God, the calling in his life, his position as a leader to better the life of those he's leading. So people under his leadership should be given testimony for his leadership. Ah, thank God. That's who a, a true leader is. Number two, a leader does not, a true leader does not see position, leadership as a position that exempts him from following due process. He's a leader, he will follow the due process. This is the deal. This is the organized structure. You know, at times when they bring reports of their department, Kingsmen and uh, and um, Ebuepas, I used to ask some of our people: Has this person made contribution in this department? Has this person made contribution in this department? It is not how loyal to me eh, that makes me to know that you are loyal. It is your loyalty in the, ex, in, the, in the rules we have established that will make me to know if you are a loyal person. Because some of you can do eye service to me. Yes, sir. Papa, hey, you run me. 
but I won't rule that exhibition hotel fake in there. So Timati Bere, they don't have some few don't have respect for the people we put in leadership. I have to challenge one of us now. Ask him. I say you didn't give to me. He says, no, sir, it's not like that. It must be like that. And instantly I adjust. For Jesus to go under John the Baptist to baptize him, follow the rules. Because leadership is not a position that should make you proud. It's an opportunity to serve. And the last one that I spoke about just now. Every single time you, God gives you a leader, lift up his hand. Don't join to pull his hand down. You lift up his hand. You see that as you lift his hand, the anointing of grace over his life will be opening doors for you. These are three things I want you to take hold of this month. The Lord will help you. In your leadership assignment, you will not fail. Now, those of you that are not in church leadership, you are in secular places working, you know your boss. Respect them. Mark them one lesson. Don't say, I want my boss's position. Let me do it so that he will fail. When he fail, they will sack him. If you do like that, you are sowing a bad seed. And that seed will later fight you. To the glory of God, ever before coming to full-time ministry, all the places where I worked, I had a good record of service. If you are my leader, I will serve you. I will lift your hand up. That's why when people want to leave our church, people left. Some of our leaders, I pray for them when they are going. When one of them was going, he said, sir, I am going to God said I should go and start a church. I called him. I prayed for him. I don't have one dot of fear that anybody's leaving we scatter the work because I didn't sow it. But she came in on fawo e run tem eh orowo e mo se temi no sile e ru ama ba mi. Now all our people that that land work, I told them, let your boss release you. In fact, one of us when the boss brought her list is uh, the list of what you want to collect for to release her cooler of meat is it not 200 how many pieces 100 pieces live chicken two cooler of amala cooler of rice she was begging me to beg the woman but when the woman followed him followed her to me the woman sat in front of me and the woman says, sir, this is what I collect. My, our sister was saying, cyber me the one. When she said, this is what I collect, I said, sister, you will pay it. Mommy, ah, baby, phone call. Ah, pastor, to go back my And I told her, let her release you from her heart. God will bless you to give her all she's, she asked for. Did God not do it? God did it. She paid everything. She was joyfully released. I said, let, let her release you in such a way that even when she has job to do, she doesn't have time, she can call you. Go and do the job and she will not be afraid that you will corner her. I went to, let me summarize with this. I went to preach in a church. I used to go to preach there frequently. So in one of the days after preaching, I came back to the office. Somebody now came to see me. As he was introducing himself, before he introduced, he said, sir, the Lord said I should come and join this church. I said, eh. Nah. As what he said, God said I should come and team up with you. That's I saw you. God said you are my pastor. I said, then where did you know me from? Have you met me before? He said, yes, sir. You used to come and preach in our church. I'm even a minister there. I said, I'm sorry. He says, I don't understand. I said, you cannot join this church. The voice you have heard, you have heard, is not the voice of God. God will not break a place to build another one. He looked at me. I said, brother, I said, sir, go back to your church. Serve God there and he will bless you. It's over 15 years now that brother is in that church. 
Another one came. He said, sir, that time we're looking for a drummer. He went on the drums and started playing drums for us. Ah, what a good girl. But as he was playing, I was looking at his face. I know this person, but I don't know where I know him. So after the service, they received him as newcomer. And now said, you should see me. So he sat here, I sat here. He said, sir, the Holy Spirit said I should come and join this church. And I'll be playing drums for you. I said, your face is familiar. He said, I know you, sir. You have come to preach in our church three times. I said, who is your pastor? He mentioned the name. He said, I'm even the junior brother of the pastor's wife. I said, you can't stay here. Right there, I dialed the pastor's wife. I said, hello, ma. Your brother is in front of me now. And I know that he's the drummer of the church. Who played drums in church today? He said, sir. He left our church in anger. Scattered the choir. Nobody even played today. I said, ma, he will return to church today. He told me that the Holy Spirit says he will stay here. He said, if the Holy Spirit is saying to him, pastor, maybe you should take him. I said, no. A scatterer cannot hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. Oh, that be Holy Ghost. Why pastor? Come on, me. Oh, my be Runa. I now preached to him and told him to go back. I don't want to take vagabonds. He won't know mama sorry for she already be pay oh ni kia he be to bat it around one year. Okay, and the conscious and be yeah can sale ba he wants to be with me. Oh my bad bad low what he no. Build your own people, build your own team. Go and check all our businesses, all our except the ministry in our hands, the, the school in our hands. All our teachers, we built them by ourselves. When they came in, they didn't, we, didn't, we didn't go to any school to go and say, okay, leave that school, we'll pay you better. So we don't have that fear that if anybody should leave, Oma, come along. Nobody ever try, come leave, come we'll be on Oma, tell you. Some ministers that left here, even their wives did not go with them. Let's try someone have it. Do what is right. Do what is right. Be on your feet. Do what is right. Now say after me, a leader is a servant. I didn't hear you. Do it well. 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 You know some of you, people came to learn. To learn. To learn. To To learn. To learn. To learn. To learn. To learn. To learn. To Babo, take that plate. While I see Urita, that's liberty. If you buy Laura, on Java for me. Koto de uti ge a shorton, abi. Koto de uti ge runton. Any kiuli waste time. At least I lo do meji lo do me kinto release. A leader is a servant. Ento ba shida da umaji umaji re. The man that trained me in Bible school. I can't bless him. You know what he told me? At the final time of graduation, he looked at me and said, See, your scrutum is in my hand. I will squeeze it as I want now. A day to graduation, he told us to go and bring 50, 50,000, or else we should forfeit it. We went, we were running Helter Skelter because we have printed an IV. He said, why you not do it? He collected the money. On the day of graduation, he put tray in our hands. He said, we should tell our visitors, if we don't make 20, 20,000, we should forget it. We were begging people, a job, a job. He will collect the tray, he will count the money. It's not yet complete. We'll go out again. We were begging. But you know, as he was doing all those things, I was saying to myself, I am signing out. Out of everything that has to do with this man, there was a time in our need. He called me. I didn't respond. You know why? Because he did not sow the seed that will make him harvest anything. Watch what you are doing now. It's a seed. Whatever opportunity you have, they came to learn from you. Teach them. Let them prosper. You never can tell. 
what God will use them for to do in your life tomorrow. One chelly mafish and Jan go come up one pad a man connected. Master of the years, screw Tom Tiano, which you allow me. You know how some of you masters are sweet. How about the job freedom? I want my phone. I want difficult. You do if they did it for you, don't do it for anybody. You just continue to sow your own seed. Life is a seed. Did you get me? You will excel. Say I'm a leader and I'm a servant. Say I'm a leader, I'm a servant. I will use my gifts, my talents, my calling to better the life of those under me. I will not fail God in my leadership assignment of making the life of people better. Help me, O God, in Jesus' name. I bless you today in this leadership class because you have heard this message. As you go out to carry it out, the Lord will bless your steps. You will not fail as a leader. The Lord will honor your sacrifices. The things you do to better the life of people will make their lives better. And the reward shall come from God to you in the name of Jesus. Leadership will prosper in your life and in your hands in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this message. As I'll be anointing these people again today, Lord, 